good evening uh, to those that have uh, joined us for our uh, presentation workshop tonight on the proposed Magnolia Avenue ADA improvements and um, city parklet policy. Um, we do have a brief presentation that we will go over at the beginning. Um, looks like we've only got a handful of, of folks who have logged on so far, so we're um, going to give it about five minutes or so uh, to let people uh, join in in case they had any difficulties with the platform. Um, and then we'll go through the presentation and then we'll have uh, the bulk of the workshop will be available for questions and answers. Um, and then if we have um, a good number of folks that join us halfway through or so, um, we will maybe run through the presentation again uh, quickly um, at the midway point, uh, pending on how many questions uh, we have and how the dialogue is, is going. So I'm going to stand by for a few minutes as um, folks kind of, of check in. Um, and we will uh, get going within the next five minutes um, either way. Um, so how it's going to work is we'll run through a presentation pretty brief um, and um, trying to keep it to about 10, 15 minutes so that then we have uh, opportunity for questions at the end. Um, and uh, with this platform to ask a question um, when we come to the Q&A session, if you can raise your hand and then our um, assistant to the city manager, Shannon O'Hare, will call on you and unmute your microphone um, so that you can ask your question or provide your comments. Okay, just going to give it one more minute here and then we'll uh, jump into the presentation. Okay, uh, we're gonna get going. So I'm gonna have a presentation here, about a dozen slides or so uh, to go over the downtown Magnolia ADA improvements project, as well as some information on parklets uh, for discussion um, on an upcoming city council uh, parklet uh, policy. So the agenda, um, like I said, I'll try and keep it short so that we have as much opportunity as possible for folks to, to weigh in. Um, tonight, uh, my name is Julian Skinner. I'm the public works director for the city of Larkspur. I'm also here with city staff is Rich Cho. He's the project manager. He's our uh, scribe tonight. He'll be taking uh, notes uh, throughout the presentation and um, getting the comments um, into the record. And then also Shannon O'Hare is the assistant to the city manager. She's moderating the meeting tonight and she will be um, helping folks uh, when it's uh, the question and answer period uh, to chime in with comments. And then also uh, we've been working with a landscape architect RHAA um, on this, these projects. And so Megan Dale 
um, is here tonight if there's any questions of a technical nature with the presentation uh, components. Um, so we're gonna split, uh, start out with an overview of the ADA project. Um, and then the latter slides will be on the uh, parklets. And then we'll have a, a brief chat about the next steps and where we go from here. And then, as I mentioned, uh, a good question and answer uh, session. So the Magnolia ADA project has uh, been in our capital improvement program for quite a while. Um, it proposes to um, improve the sidewalks in the downtown core. So we're looking at Magnolia Avenue from King to Ward. Um, most of the sidewalk in that corridor does not meet ADA requirements. And so this project uh, proposes to remove and replace all of the sidewalk in those two blocks with new uh, concrete sidewalks that would meet ADA requirements. Um, and this section of Magnolia is also included in our Measure B paving program. So uh, the core of the project is uh, repaving and remove and replace of all of the concrete sidewalk. Um, and uh, to that extent, because of that extent of work that we're going to be doing, we're also looking at what other improvements could we make to this corridor while we'll have everything ripped up. Um, this is probably the best opportunity to make improvements on this corridor um, efficiently uh, while we're already there doing work and we already have things like sidewalks uh, ripped up. It's the best opportunity to put in new trees or um, other things um, that may enhance the, the corridor while we're already uh, working on it. So um, that's kind of the feedback that we've been looking for um, and we're looking for tonight is, is what should those enhancements be that we should be looking at for the corridor. Um, and so um, while the paving and the sidewalk work is funded with the Measure B uh, Citywide Paving Plan Fund, um, there haven't really been any identified funds for the streetscape. So uh, we're going to be um, working with our finance department and the city council uh, to identify appropriate funds that we could use for some of those enhancements. But um, it is also likely that we will identify um, some enhancements that we don't have capacity for uh, at the moment budget wise. And so, but we wanna design this project um, looking at what future enhancements we may make also. So um, obviously anything that needs to go in and underground, uh, this is the time to do it as soon as we're already um, gonna be removing um, the sidewalks and, and the pavement. Um, so we have done some previous um, outreach. We initially reached out to the businesses, the property owners on the two blocks and solicited some feedback on if we were to include some enhancements, what kinds of things would they be looking for in the corridor? And uh, most of the feedback came that uh, they were looking for some more trees and some lighting opportunities um, in the corridor. And some other things um, like benches um, also came up, but trees and lighting were definitely the, uh, the top choices from that initial uh, outreach with um, the business owners and um, the property owners within the two blocks. Um, and then we uh, are now kicking off our public wide um, outreach. And so we did have a, a workshop last Tuesday in the downtown parking lot um, where we presented the slides that you're going to see tonight and, and asked the public for the same kind of feedback um, on those improvements. And then we're also uh, starting to get feedback on the parklets too, as um, you know, as the COVID rules are, are changing, um, the parklets have been out there under emergency encroachment permits and some questions have come about uh, as far as what, what is a parklet policy gonna be in Larkspur moving forward? We don't currently have one. So this is our opportunity to get some public feedback uh, that the council can use for their consideration um, as we move forward with a parklet policy. Um, and the project going back to the ADA project, we anticipate about three months of construction. So we're still trying to work out the best timing for doing that. Um, obviously repaving the street and ripping out the sidewalks is going to be impactful. It's gonna be right in front of a lot of the shops, businesses um, on Magnolia. So um, we're also uh, looking for some feedback on folks as far as uh, best times of year um, and whether they would like to see us go in there and do it really quickly, but be uh, throughout the whole two blocks or whether they could um, live with the construction lasting a little bit longer, but if we focused it and staged it, so the impacts to the individual businesses weren't, um, weren't so much um, in a shorter term. 
Um, so this is the uh, landscape architect plan of the corridor. There's two sheets here starting um, at King on the left and then working towards Kane on the right. Uh, the green trees are the existing, the red trees are where uh, they have identified opportunities to put new street trees. Um, and then all of the concrete sidewalks get removed and replaced with new ADA compliant, which basically means flatter um, sidewalks. And then there's also some opportunities for some uh, some bulb outs and redoing some of the ADA uh, ramps throughout the corridor. Um, and then this is the second half um, of that uh, plan sheet that shows from Kane all the way over to uh, Ward on the right. And again, the same here is existing trees in green and the new ones uh, where we think we have room to put them in red. Um, and so based on our kind of initial scoping of this project, uh, we're not proposing to remove existing trees. Um, there, um, you know, one, one direction for this project would be to remove all trees and put a new consistent tree throughout the corridor, but um, based on some of the public feedback and our landscape architects uh, recommendation, most of the trees that are out there are suitable. Um, and it makes sense to, to keep them uh, and supplement them with uh, new trees where we have room. So these are some of the options that we're looking at uh, the trees on the left. Uh, the top one is a crepe myrtle. The bottom one is a water gum. Uh, there are examples of both of these trees already on the corridor. Um, and what we're proposing for this project is um, the crepe myrtle. But again, we're looking for feedback from, from the public on that. It's a, a flowering tree. There's many different types of crepe myrtle and we would choose the, the type that has a single trunk. So it's more like a, a tree than a bush um, so that it would be suitable for string lights. Um, you know, tree twinkle lights um, in, the, in the future. Um, and then the next option is we're looking at uh, places where we could put benches um, along the corridor. Um, the top bench is kind of a, a typical street uh, furnishing bench. It's a little more um, stylish than our standard city bench, which is the one on the bottom. Uh, that's typically what we use in our, in our parks. Um, so those are a couple of options, uh, whether folks prefer we stick with the city standard bench that we use in parks or whether they look for something that's a little bit more um, used in a, in a streetscape environment. Um, and then there may be some opportunity to spot some trash receptacles, new trash receptacles throughout the corridor. And so the bottom one is kind of our city standard. The top one is um, a, a version of that that is a little bit more contemporary. It's got the wood on it uh, that maybe would match a wood bench if we landed with um, wood benches. Um, and then the last slide is tree grates. And so um, we're proposing to put tree grates in to uh, protect the, uh, the trees and make sure that um, the irrigation and everything like that um, is protected. Um, and then also um, it acts to widen the sidewalk for ADA use, um, as opposed to just having a well with um, bark in it or decomposed granite or something like that. Um, the tree grade does offer um, a kind of a widened flat area. As far as the lights go, we did get uh, comments that people were interested in being able to light the trees. These are the two most common ways on the left are what are called up lights. Um, so those are actually contained underneath the tree grates and they shine up. Um, as you can see the two trees in the background here, it kind of enhances the canopy from underneath of the tree. Um, and we did get some feedback at the first public workshop um, that in a corridor like this with lots of storefront lighting and street lights that the up lights maybe don't work um, as well as they do in a location that doesn't have as much ambient light. Um, but we're also showing here the standard kind of twinkle lights, we call them, uh, where people string lights um, in the trees. And so to accommodate either one of these lighting options, we would need to run power under the sidewalk. And so that's one of the things we would be looking uh, to do with our um, ADA project is, is run the power under the street to set it up so that we could um, install this lighting, um, install it in the future, or work with the businesses um, to get some lighting um, installed on the trees. Um, so that's, um, that's kind of the summary on what we presented for the ADA project. Um, I'm gonna run into um, the parklet um, 
component of the, of the PowerPoint now. Um, and so as you likely noticed, there are a number of parklets throughout Magnolia and on some of the side streets. Um, those have all been permitted uh, with emergency COVID encroachment permits. The city does not have a, a parklet policy. And so in response to uh, indoor dining being closed, we were approached by some of the restaurants to use areas of the sidewalk and the parking areas uh, to accommodate outdoor dining. And so we have been approving those as they have come in. Um, the main guidelines have been regarding safety. So that's why you see orange uh, crash cushions on either end of the parklets, but we don't really um, have any other policies regarding what the parklets look like or how they're constructed uh, because these were all done as, as an emergency basis to um, help the restaurants out in, in the short term. Um, and so now with uh, COVID rules changing and indoor dining gradually being opened back up, uh, we find that a lot of folks have gotten used to the parklets. They like the outdoor dining. Um, and so the question has come up as far as um, what do parklets look like in the future for Larkspur? Um, all of the permits that have been issued to date are temporary. Um, they have end dates on them of June 30th. Um, they previously had end dates that we have extended out as COVID um, restrictions have uh, persisted, um, but um, it's not our plan to keep um, approving these on a temporary basis. We would like to uh, have a discussion with the community um, about parklets in the downtown. Should we have any at all? If so, should there be a restriction on how many we have? Um, and if there's a lot of demand for the parklets, how do we determine who gets one and who doesn't? Things like that. Um, and so we're looking for feedback from the public um, on parklets moving forward. Um, the negative side and positive side, uh, so far the biggest negative side that we have heard is uh, most of the parklets that we have are in parking spaces. So to install a parklet, we're losing some parking capacity. Um, and the positive side is people um, have told us that they think it brings a positive um, vibe to the downtown and some energy and people see people not just walking into downtown, but sitting in and enjoying um, the businesses there. Um, and then there are other uh, bigger agencies that are further along that already have parklet policies. And so uh, we've been combing through those as well as talking to the other agencies in Marin that have been dealing with um, temporary parklets the same as, as we have. And um, a lot of the parklets in uh, say San Francisco and Oakland um, are actually public parklets. So what that means is a restaurant builds a parklet in front of um, their um, restaurant um, for their patrons, but it's because it's in the public right of way, it's a public facility. So um, most of them have signs on them that say available to the public. So if you were walking down the street and needed to take a break, you could sit at one of the tables um, in front of the restaurant. That's one model. The other model is you make uh, them specific to the restaurant and then um, the restaurant basically has a license agreement that gives them um, the full use of, um, of that parklet. And there's other hybrids of that too, where the restaurants have exclusive use during the day. Uh, but say a restaurant is only open for dinner and not for lunch, then when the restaurant's not open, the parklet is available to everybody else outside of those hours. So um, those are the kind of things that um, we need to um, get into a parklet policy um, moving forward. And then aside from those policy issues, there's also um, the look and feel of, of a parklet. Uh, we've got many different types in the downtown. We've got some that are just tables and chairs um, on parking spaces, and then we have a few where they've had carpenters come in and build structures um, out in the parking spaces. And so um, one of the questions we're looking at is if we do have parklets in the downtown or in Larkspur, should there be a consistent look? Um, should they all kind of look the same or should they be exactly the same or should there be a theme? Um, and so um, some of the questions that come up is, should there be a limit on the wall height? Um, you know, if it's to be a part of the street atmosphere, there's a desire to have the walls a little bit um, lower so that um, the people can see and be seen when they're in the parklet. And it's not like they're, um, you know, off uh, and not part of the, the streetscape. Um, and then materials, um, you know, there's, there's metal, there's wood, there's different, um, there's concrete, there's different types of 
uh, materials that have been uh, used throughout. Um, and then another common question is whether we should allow them to have roofs or trellises above. Makes them a little bit more enclosed, but it also gives the opportunity for hanging plants or things like that that somebody may want to do to personalize their, um, their parklet. Um, and then how big should they be? Um, you know, a parking space is typically about 20 feet long. Um, doesn't get you a whole lot of uh, dining space. And so typically there are at least two uh, parking spaces uh, in size. And then we do have a couple in town where they were built at, at three. Um, and so obviously the bigger the parklet, the more useful it is to the restaurant, but the bigger the impact um, is on parking. Um, and then also branding. Uh, this kind of goes to the question as to whether they're private or, or public. We don't, um, or most, I should say, most agencies don't allow uh, branding or advertising on the parklet. Uh, they're not to be used as banners for um, advertising restaurants or to supplement any signage. Um, and then also uh, colors um, is another uh, factor in whether we should have a consistent look or let everybody do their own um, unique design. Um, so one thing we had our landscape consultants do is we kind of chatted about um, some of the other agencies and what they have in a, a parklet policy and um, some of the things, uh, some of the do's and the don'ts. Um, and so taking some of the general information, they came up with a kind of a draft starting point for if we were to have a standard for what a parking, uh, a parklet should look like, what kind of components would we have? So uh, here's an example. They did a one space, a two space and a three space. Um, and kind of some of the things that we've seen uh, from the other agencies was um, keeping it open. So that's keeping the sidewalls um, lower um, so that there's a little bit more connection uh, with the street. Um, this has um, the trellis, so it has an upper structure, but not necessarily a roof. We're showing umbrellas here. And then also some planting component to it. So you can see on either end, we've got planter boxes that kind of define the, um, the edge um, of uh, the parklet. And uh, creatively, these can double as crash cushions. Uh, the bottoms of them can be filled with water, so they act as deterrents for um, vehicles that may be in adjacent uh, parking spaces. Um, so in looking at some of the other agencies and, and what they have done, um, we have the typical parklets that we see in Larkspur where they've actually gone into the parking space and the dining is in the parking space and then the sidewalk is left open for pedestrians. Um, but what that does is, as you may have noticed, if you sat in one of those parklets is the server going back and forth is crossing the sidewalk and crossing people who are walking up and down the street when they're bringing your food and, and taking your plates away and, and things like that. And so uh, there is another option that some cities have employed where um, they flip flop and they actually have the parklet on the sidewalk. So it's more contiguous with the actual restaurant. And then they push the walkway out into the parking space. So the bottom right photo here um, shows where the parklet has been set up on a sidewalk and then there is a platform out in the parking space that becomes um, the sidewalk and so somebody walking down the sidewalk um, does have to jog out of the way to get around uh, the parklet but they're not walking in between people uh, with dishes and food going back and forth um, to the serving area. And so one of the common questions that comes up um, with the parklets is, is the offset of, of parking. And so, um, you know, in a lot of business districts and, and shopping areas and, and um, such places, there's always a, a concern of, of parking. If, if people can't park, they can't uh, come to my business or it reduces the amount of people that can come to my business if there's not available parking. And so um, while the city has not done a parking study for some time and it's not uh, advisable to do a parking study at this time because of COVID and, and the numbers are, are not realistic for what we would be looking at in the future. Uh, we did here uh, put on a map uh, uh, a collection of the available public um, and private parking spaces um, in the downtown. And so, you know, we've heard from a lot of folks that, um, you know, maybe one thing you do is if you put a parking, uh, if you put a parklet in parking spaces that takes up three, then maybe you should be looking for where we can gain three parking spaces um, somewhere. So 
Um, you know, there are some potentials uh, for um, restriping some of the parking in the downtown core to squeeze out some um, additional spaces. Um, you know, if, if it turns out that we land on a, on a policy where we want to not lose any parking spaces by putting in in um, the parklets. Um, so this is just kind of a document that starts that process of, of looking at uh, where the parking is in and around um, the downtown. Um, so like I said, I'm keep my presentation pretty short because I want to make sure folks have an opportunity to weigh in. Um, and so at this time, um, if you have questions, uh, we can go back and look at any of the slides in the presentation or if you just have uh, some general comments. Uh, we ask that you raise your hand. Shannon will unmute you. Um, and then uh, feel free to ask your question or provide your comment. If we get to a point where you haven't had a chance uh, to weigh in and you need to leave or we come to the end of our allotted time here, um, we invite you to send an email to the email you see at the bottom left screen here, publicworks at cityoflarkspur.org, and your comment will be taken in the same context as anything that we received tonight. And we'll be basically collecting all of this feedback um, along with looking at the policies from some of the other cities and gathering all of this information and then providing it uh, to the city council. Uh, and I think we have the meeting is set up for Monday, uh, May 24th. Um, I'm gonna check, uh, but I believe it's Monday 24th. Um, of May at 7 p.m. We'll have a special council meeting uh, where we'll go over some of these issues. We'll have another presentation and we'll provide some of the feedback that we got from the public. And then um, we'll have um, a discussion with the city council uh, about what they would like a parklet policy to look like. And then the goal is to come back before June 30th when all of these temporary permits uh, expire uh, to the city council uh, with uh, a final parklet policy. So I will end there and hand it over to uh, Shannon to invite people to comment or ask questions. Yeah, at the moment, I'm seeing no active questions in the chat feature, but if folks would prefer to chat, uh, put the question in the chat, please feel free to do so at any time. I'm seeing one raised hand currently from Laramie. I'm gonna go ahead and lower your hand and unmute you. Um, enable the allow to talk feature. So whenever you're ready to provide any questions or comments, please go ahead. Hi, yes. Uh, thank you so much for putting this uh, presentation together. I love that the city is, uh, is considering um, a part of the policy. Uh, just so I understand the scope of the work, is it designed just to deal with the existing temporary permits that have already been uh, approved or is it meant to provide guidance for uh, possibly expanding it. And and uh, so uh, I, I guess that's question one. Uh, point one is um, I don't care about parking. I, I get rid of all of it if you can. Okay, so um, yeah, so the immediate concern is the, the, the temporary parklets that are out there, but the, the, the policy itself will be a citywide policy and not necessarily just restricted to the downtown um, core. And so all of the parklets that are out there now um, have an expiration date with a couple of exceptions of June 30th. And so uh, what we would like to do is rather than keep um, extending the temporary permits is we would like to have a formal policy so that we can issue a new permit um, for a parklet based on the new policy. And that could be for a new business that has not had a temporary parklet to date, but they like the idea uh, and they want to move forward and have a parklet, but they never had a temporary one. So no, it's it's not just for the temporary uh, parklets. And uh, at the moment, the focus is on the downtown. And that's when we start talking about some of the aesthetics. We're more thinking about them being in the downtown, but uh, you know, a parklet policy, there may be other areas in, in the city where um, there are businesses that want to move into public spaces. And so, um, you know, we could have a parklet policy that's general in nature and has specific components for the downtown core that talk more to um, aesthetics and, and, and parking. So uh, we're just starting out with this uh, process. We're, we're looking for that kind of um, feedback um, and we'll have those conversations uh, with the city council. Great, thank you. Um, and also just in terms of those options that you mentioned, I do uh, 
I, I really like the idea of that hybrid model um, of, uh, of making it open to the public uh, as well as kind of giving the, the business owners priority. Okay, thank you. And I'm seeing no raised hands at the moment or any questions in the chat. Okay, well, we had about 50 folks, I think, signed in to our outdoor uh, workshop that we did in the downtown parking lot. So I think that just goes to show that um, folks are looking to get back to real life workshops and favor that over the Zoom. We have one hand raised now, Julian, from Council Member Kevin Haroff. Kevin, if you, uh, yeah. Haroff, if you want to mute yourself, we're good to go. I think I unmuted. Did I not? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Yeah. Um, I just want to uh, thank uh, uh, Julian for a great presentation. It's very helpful and um, I look forward to seeing more on this. I just wanted to confirm your understanding that we will be having a special city council meeting on the 24th. Um, so there's an opportunity to continue this discussion with the council more formally involved at that time. That's it. Yes, thank you. All right, I'm not seeing any raised hands or questions in the chat. Okay, um, I'm not. Uh, I'm not seeing how many folks are with us. So uh, there yeah. may be ten attendees at the moment. Okay. So I think what I'm going to do is, in case some some people couldn't join us right at six, is I'm gonna um, I'm going to scroll um, back through um, the presentation slowly and um, see if that invites more questions or comments. And then um, also uh, we'll stand by and see if we get any new uh, participants. Um, we actually have one question that, that just came in. So we have a question asking, where can we find the information about the downtown parking lot meeting? Um, yes, yeah, so uh, we're compiling all of the information. So basically what you see here today in these slides are the same um, slides that we had. We had boards out at the public uh, parking lot meeting and we invited folks to, to comment. We both had um, sticky notes. Uh, we had uh, written long comments and then we also had red dots and green dots for um, red was I don't like this feature and green was I like this feature. So um, together with our consultants, we're compiling all of that information and then together with comments and questions that we get uh, from tonight, um, we're going to compile all that information and make it available to the public as part of the package that goes out before the city council meeting on the on the 24th. Um, but in the presentation tonight, you're seeing exactly what folks saw at the public uh, workshop in the parking lot. Um, you're just not seeing all of the, the sticky notes and comments that the, that the public had. All right, we have another question that actually I can answer because we'll be doing the work is when will this presentation and recording will be posted? So uh, in the next, within the next couple of days, certainly within 48 hours, um, the recording will be posted to the City of Larkspur YouTube channel, which is also where it houses all of our recorded meetings. So all of our city council meetings, any community meetings that have gone virtual during COVID, as well as planning commission meetings, library commission meetings um, that have gone virtual during COVID. That's where you can find it. There's a link to our channel right on the cityoflarkspur.org website um, for anyone who may be interested.
So anybody who's joining late, feel free to uh, chime in with any questions or, um, or comments. We've run through, it's a pretty brief presentation. Uh, we've already run through it once, but uh, we can certainly uh, do it again. We're here for questions, um, comments that anybody has, uh, but more than happy to run through the presentation again for um, anybody who's just joining us. I'm seeing a raised hand, Julian, from Peter. Peter, I'm gonna go ahead and lower your hand and uh, unmute you and allow you to talk. So whenever you're ready. Peter, if you'd like to ask a question, I believe you have yourself on mute at the moment. Can you hear me now? Yep. Yes. Oh, yeah. Um, it, uh, it seems to me there's less and less space for bicycles and, and, and bicyc bicyclists. Um, and the other problem is um, uh, there are no public facilities anywhere in downtown Larkspur. Um, when you're considering all of this, you should look at downtown San Anselmo, which does a very good job of handling um, large numbers of cyclists and also the problem of, of, of public facilities. That's the two points I'd like to bring up. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, yeah, so we did at the public uh, outdoor workshop actually get some requests for uh, more bike racks. So we do have a, a handful of bike racks in the downtown, um, but that's one thing along with um, where benches might go that uh, we can look at uh, certainly, we're aware if we put more trees up, it provides more opportunities for people to uh, chain their bikes to trees, but that's not a good idea. Um, so, um, yeah, we will be um, looking at opportunities to install uh, additional bike racks um, if that's something that comes out of the, the public process um, as a need. As far as the bikes on the streets, none of, um, I don't think any um, of the proposals that we've chatted about have included encroaching into the travel lanes on Magnolia. So uh, what we're looking at doing is, is putting in um, the parklets, if they were to go in completely contained within where a parked car would be. Uh, so Magnolia is actually a, a, a class three bike facility, which means that the, the bikes and, and cars um, are to share uh, the travel lane. And so um, as, a, as a bike and a car would come up on a um, parklet, um, the idea is that there would be as much room there as if uh, the bicycle, bicycle and the car were coming up upon a, um, a parked uh, car. Um, so uh, we don't anticipate that the, um, the parklets are gonna infringe at all on the bicycle access on the, for those traveling on the street. Um, but we can certainly look at opportunities for um, installing bike racks. All right, I have another typed question, Julian. Will any of the parklets be added in the downtown parking lot? Curious if there are any plans to develop the downtown parking lot. It's a premium downtown space that seems to be under and or poorly utilized. Um, do you have any response to that question? Yeah. So the, the downtown parking lot where we held um, the public workshop is actually fully, the city portion of it is fully developed as a, as a public parking uh, lot. And it was actually restriped and reconfigured about five or six years ago to maximize the number of parking spaces available within the city portion of that area. Uh, most of the unimproved areas that are around uh, the city's parking areas are privately owned um, by um, the same property owner that owns the, the, the strip mall. Um, so that's, that's not uh, property that the city controls um, at the moment or has any um, ability to 
expand um, the parking lot. As far as parklets in um, the parking lot, isn't really anything that's that's come up uh, to date. One of the one of the issues um, that we ran into with the emergency permits with COVID is if the parklets are to be for a restaurant, then the parklet is supposed to be um, within close proximity to the restaurant. There are health code issues with, uh, say, cooking the food in a restaurant and then traveling across the street or to an adjacent parking lot that's not part of the restaurant to serve um, the food. So that isn't really anything that um, has come up or that um, we've looked at as far as having parklets in the parking lot. There's a raised hand from Christine. Christine, I'm going to go ahead and allow you to talk and unmute you. I, I have a question and I would ask you to, if you could expand on the necessary work to the sidewalks to make them ADA compliant. Right. Um, so um, there are ADA um, requirements for uh, public sidewalks that um, the essence of it is the width of a sidewalk and the slope of a sidewalk need to meet certain requirements um, for ADA. Um, so it's a width such that a wheelchair can get through and then um, also a slope so that somebody in a wheelchair uh, or somebody who had mobility issues uh, wasn't leaning or didn't ha doesn't have their uh, wheelchair veer off into the street. Um, and then also offsets in elevation uh, such that wheelchair wheels don't get um, caught when there's um, different levels in the sidewalk. And so we did have a survey done and uh, there is a good portion of the sidewalk within these two blocks that does not meet ADA. And um, in looking at it with our consultant, there's, there's not really a good way to patchwork fix it um, because it's all the sidewalk obviously is connected. So as you remove and replace say a few of the panels of sidewalk to make them ADA, then they're not gonna meet the sidewalk panels next to them. And it's um, an issue of kind of chasing the work all over the place. And it's actually less expensive to remove all the sidewalk and start over from scratch and put it all in um, at an ADA compliance slope. So uh, the configuration for the most part will be the same. Uh, the sidewalk width will be the same. Uh, the curb will be for the most part in the same location. It just will be all uniform. Uh, you won't have any offset joints and it will be to some degree um, flatter. Um, so you don't have uh, the, the steeper sloped sections and then the areas where it's really flat and then the next panel is tilted and then it goes back to flat again. Um, so the extent of it will be um, everything from the building face all the way out to the street curb would be removed and replaced. And that's on the entirety of the two blocks from Ward uh, to King. Does that answer your question or? Did you have uh, have more? So for those of you that are still with us, this is a photo that was taken a few days ago um, of the parklet in front of Ruleys. Um, and so this is kind of a good 
um, angle at what a typical parklet would look like where you have uh, the wooden platform that's out in the parking space and it's actually flush or at the same elevation as the sidewalk um, and the curb. Um, and this one, I'm not sure what the wall height is. It looks like they've got planters at the tops of uh, their walls. And um, this one obviously was uh, constructed with a, with a roof. Um, a lot of these did go in over the winter. And so um, some of them have been installed with roofs to protect from the rain. Um, but also it provides uh, protection from the sun um, in the summer. So, um, you know, that's one, uh, one component of the parklets that uh, we would like to come out in, in, in our policy is, is uh, whether we're in favor of, of roofs or not. Um, the other uh, feature you see on this one is while the top is open, there's plexiglass um, there running along it, kind of like a makeshift window. Um, and so obviously for the sun, you could have umbrellas or you could have a roof. Um, I think if it's raining, the umbrellas are probably not as, as good an option um, as a roof. Um, I think this, this parklet and the one at left bank uh, both were constructed uh, with roofs. And then looking at this slide here that has the amenities on it, uh, I think we got a lot of favorable feedback at the um, outdoor workshop for the crepe myrtle. Um, and picking a street tree, we're looking for something that won't be so big that the roots would be an issue and may push up sidewalk or, or street in the future. Um, and also something that doesn't have uh, big pods or can create a mess um, on the sidewalk. So um, both of these uh, both of these options had good support at the public meeting. And I think when we uh, put the information out there that shows um, the results, I don't I don't think we had any requests for any other uh, types of trees. Uh, as far as the benches go, um, I think uh, most folks um, were leaning towards the city standard bench that's shown on the bottom um, versus the top one that's a little bit more modern um, looking, but both did get a fair share of, of green dots um, in that process. Um, same with the trash receptacle, the city standard um, received the most uh, favorable feedback, uh, but there were some folks that liked the added wood accent of uh, the one on the top. And I think uh, for both of these items, actually, there were some comments that a, a combination of, of the two, something that's a little simpler, like the city standard on the bottom, but maybe pulls in some of the contemporary components from the ones on the top um, might be a good choice. Um, and so we're certainly not proposing that it's one or the other. Again, we're looking for uh, feedback uh, from folks. Um, and it could be that I like this part of this and that, that part of that. Um, and then with the tree grates, I think the tree grates were the one that was, um, kind of the most in favor of the standard, which is the one at the bottom, kind of a traditional radial pattern versus, um, the one up top, um, this kind of a more modern color, um, and pattern. And most of the public um, were weighing in that they liked the twinkle tree lights as opposed to the up lights. Um, as I mentioned, we did get some feedback that the up lights are maybe not as effective when they're surrounded by um, street lights and uh, right next to uh, shop windows that are also uh, lighted. The light tends to get a little uh, muted. 
So I think Shannon, if we don't have any more um, folks join us by um, 7.30, uh, we might, um, might want to log off. Yeah, yes. just let folks know, we've had just a couple of comments in the, um, in the chat feature that I'll share with staff when we're done. They aren't questions directed at the larger group, um, but know that your, your comments are received in the chat. All right, so as we wrap up the meeting, unless anyone joins us, just to reiterate, um, this meeting will be up for viewing in a couple of days on our YouTube channel. You can follow the link on our homepage of our website, and there will also be subsequent meetings at our city council meeting. So if there's any um, thoughts, people have additional question or comments, you're welcome to direct them at staff then or attend that and or attend that meeting when we have it. Is there anything else to add, Jillian, before we adjourn? Um, I don't think so. Um, like Shannon said, more more to come. And then if um, anybody has any questions um, between now and uh, when the packet is uh, published for the city council meeting on the 24th, uh, you can feel free to email at any time to publicworks at cityoflarksburg.org. Um, and then we'll take your comments or, or questions um, and then uh, we'll be compiling all the information we got from both the outdoor public meeting last week and then tonight's meeting. And as I mentioned, um, looking through some of the uh, policies that other agencies that have long established parklet policies have, as well as uh, talking with some of our neighboring Marin uh, communities uh, to see how they're uh, responding to uh, the parklet um, issue moving forward in their uh, business areas. Um, so Shannon, I think if we haven't had anybody new join us within the next 10 minutes, um, we can probably say that we're uh, good. And so um, I'd like to thank everybody uh, for joining us tonight. Um, please feel free to email us with any comments or questions you may have. Um, and look to the city website for confirmation of uh, the city council meeting where we'll have a conversation um, about all of these issues uh, and provide uh, some of the public input we've got to date. 
and then also provide another opportunity for the public to provide um, input both on the ADA improvements for Magnolia Corridor um, as well as uh, city parklet uh, policy. Um, so thank you again. Um, and with that, we shall adjourn for the evening. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.